Okay, so set yourself on your left and just come into a cross leg position. Just hold onto your knees and lift and open the chest, drive your chest upwards, draw your shoulders down away from your ears and then just look down at the floor. Soften your jaw, soften your tongue, soften your throat. Just roll onto the fronts of the seat bones. And then release your knees, bring your hands into Namaste. And then allow your eyes to gently close. Draw your attention into your breath. Breathing from the bottom of the lungs to the top of the lungs. And from the top of the lungs to the bottom of the lungs. And then draw your chin down to meet your chest. Just spend a moment to seek to generate a genuine heartfelt sense of gratitude for something or someone or somewhere. Hold on to that feeling of abundance in your heart area and then bring your hands onto your knees, palms facing upwards and then raise your head, allow your eyes to softly open. Just hold on to your knees. Just keep your eyes looking down at the floor and continue to focus on the breath. Just observe how easily your mind stays in the body or how external thoughts kind of seek to intrude. Whichever process is going on for you, just observe it and then draw your attention into your breath. So we're going to use the work, the breath slightly differently. 
So rather than breathing from the bottom of the lungs to the top of the lungs, we're going to breathe in through the nose and down into the abdomen. The Samanic breath. So we're conscious of the expansion of the um, of the abdominal region with the in breath and the contraction of the abdomen drawing towards the spine with the out breath. So just drawing your attention towards that movement of the breath. And notice how changing the breath perhaps draws your focus more sharply. Take a deep inhalation in through the nose and then turn to the right side. Draw the abdomen across, the ribs across, the shoulders across. Maintain the somanic breath into the abdominal region. Using the out breath as usual to intensify the turn. And then come back to the center, hold onto your knees, lift and open the chest. Take a deep inhalation into the abdomen. And then with an exhalation, turn. So if you can't move the breath into the abdomen, don't worry. Just draw the breath normally. But draw the breath normally with real focus listening to the journey of the breath. And then come back to the centre. Just get your belt and then stretch your legs out. So stretch into your heels and put the belt around the ends of your feet and then hold onto the belt like you're kind of riding a horse. So hold onto the belt. You can have your feet hip width apart, slightly wider than normal. Push the feet into the belt and then observe that as you push the feet into the belt and pull the belt towards you. You can roll onto the front edge of the seat bones, lifting the chest up towards the ceiling. So staying on the lift or using whichever lift you need underneath, extend from the hip consciously into the heel. Draw the breath in through the nose and down into the abdomen. Lift the chest up to the ceiling. And then come forwards. If, there's, if you've got a problem with your back, just stay at the first stage, just focusing on the breath. But if there's not, then just gently just a little bit at a time keep lifting the chest keep filling the abdomen coming forwards on the on the out breath keeping the chest lifted keeping the legs pressing deeply into the floor if you can reach around your feet then do reach around the sides of the feet rather than over the toes because that kind of keeps the chest closed so reach around the edges of the feet breathing into the abdomen 
using the out breath to come forward. And then gently release. So the aim isn't to come all the way down, but just to stretch the chest. Bring the feet into Baddha Konasana. And you can always just use the belt, slide it underneath the feet. Just hold on to the belt and then lift up into the chest. Again, drawing the breath into the abdominal region. Breathing evenly and deeply. Take hold of both ends of the belt with the left hand and then turn to the right, using the back hand into the block or into the floor, wherever you can reach. Just turn in the spine gently. Come back to the center, hold on to the belt, take a deep inhalation, and then turn to the left. Breathe into the abdomen. Using the out breath to intensify the turn. And then coming back to the center. Just release your legs and then come down onto the mat. So we're gonna stay on the floor again. So we did this yesterday, but we're gonna work just directly on the floor. So coming down into the floor and coming to Sopta Badakanasana. So keep, pull the feet in towards the body, let the knees fall apart. Press the feet really consciously together. So sub to bad canasta can easily just become um, uh, just a completely passive pose. But can you activate the legs? So press the, the feet together really firmly. Press the um, heels together. Press the outer edge of the feet together. Press the big toes together. So that the legs become activated, just like they can become activated when you press the shins into the shin bone in Virasana, in Adamuka Virasana. Feel that the pelvic region is opening up. You can always put blocks underneath your thighs if there is um, resistance. But the thing with resistance is that often wherever we feel resistance, we kind of obsess about it. We just allow the mind to just only focus on the resistance. But the thing about resistance is that it's often resistant in a particular place because of you know other regions aren't working properly. So sometimes it's good to, to draw your attention beyond the resistance and just draw your attention into areas that aren't resistant. Lengthening into the legs, into the knees, from the knees into the shins, pressing the feet together, broadening the abdomen so that the abdominal walls come down onto the floor. Of course, give the hip support if they need it. But if you work beyond that initial area of resistance, perhaps that resistance minimizes. Reach your arms up towards the ceiling, spread the fingers. Draw your attention into each individual finger. Keeping the, collar, uh, the um, shoulder blades down on the floor. 
the outer edge, the armpit edge of the shoulder blades down on the floor as well. Lift out of the armpits, lift out of the shoulder, up into the elbow, into the wrist, into the palms of the hands, into the fingertips. And then interlock the fingers, turn the palms all the way out, don't worry about cracks and pops, that's good. And then extend your arms along the floor. Again, if there's ex if there's resistance in your arms, you can use supports under your hands. But sometimes before you just instantly go for those supports, work beyond the resistance. Explore beyond the resistance. So in life, when we have a particular ailment, we often focus solely on that ailment. And often it's useful to extend our attention beyond the symptom and draw our attention into areas where there isn't discomfort. Breathe evenly. Keeping the pose active from the toes to the fingers. And of course, everything in between. Just release your arms, swap the interlock of the fingers, and then extend the palms up towards the ceiling again, and then lengthen the arms along the floor of course if there's resistance if there's discomfort if there's pain then come out of the pose you shouldn't feel bad pain in the pose if there's just a little discomfort see if you can work beyond that And then just soften into the pose. Allow the extension to soften and release. And just breathe into the pose, in through the nose and out through the nose. Becoming present in the physical body. Maintaining the breath in the abdomen. Observe perhaps how your mind has become a little sharper. More focused on the internal action of the pose. And then release your arms and then just rest your hands on your lower ribs for a moment and then gently draw your knees together have the knees together and the feet apart for a moment just really listening to the breath and just appreciating the release in the legs and then draw your knees in towards your chest just have a little rock from side to side, from top to bottom. And then just have your hands behind your knees and then rock yourself up into a seated position. Just sit in cross legs for a moment. Breathing into the abdomen. And just observe how your energy has changed and how maybe how the energy has lifted a little. Okay, so we're going to do um, trick and asana along the floor. 
So rather than doing it as a standing pose, we can do it as a reclining pose. You'll need some space at the side of your, uh, at either side of you. So um, you might have to just kind of adjust yourself in the room if you've got um, limited space. But we're gonna just come down onto the floor and like Supta Padangatasana, we're just gonna come down onto the floor, extending into the heels and then come into Tadasana. So really activate your legs, turn the fronts of the thighs in because that gives you this flexibility in the hips. Turn the fronts of the thighs in, press the kneecaps through to the back of the knee. And then lift. So the legs are easy to work, aren't they? The chest, because of the floor, maybe not so easy. So see if you can really lift the abdomen towards the diaphragm, the diaphragm up towards the collarbone, continuing to breathe in through the nose, down into the abdomen. And then raise up, bending the knee if you need to, the right leg. And then get your belt and hook the belt around that leg. So just straighten both legs. So Supta Padangatasana 1. So just get that leg to straighten. Tightening the kneecap. Tightening the kneecap of both legs, keeping that leg that's along the floor back down in um, Tadasana, turning the front of the thigh inwards, turning the front of the thigh inwards on both legs. So the, the aim at first is just to get the legs straight. So if you need to give yourself a bit more rope, then do. Try not to bring your leg too far over your head. We're not trying to kind of bring the leg towards the, the body. The leg should be at 12 o'clock. Just breathing evenly and deeply. And then just like in typical Supta Badangatasana 2, take hold of the belt um, in the right hand as close to the foot as you can without bending the knee. And then reinstate this left leg, really firm up the leg, turn the thigh inwards, and then bring the leg out to the side. At first, we're just gonna bend the elbow, bring the elbow out in line with your shoulder, and then just bring that leg out to the side. So you get this strong sense of stretch in the hamstrings of that right leg. Keep the left leg really, really firm. Just breathe in evenly. Now, normally in this pose, this right leg doesn't come down onto the floor. It's kind of, if it comes down onto the floor, then you're either cheating or there's a major problem. So just be at this stage to start off with, just breathing into the abdomen. Then we're going to bring that leg down to the floor. So the little toe side comes down onto the floor. So you might have to lift that left leg off the floor a little in order to accommodate it. So bring that leg all the way down and then reactivate that left leg. Turn the abdomen from the right to the left and then stretch out your left arm. So it's in line with your shoulder and then look over the left arm. So if your feet were on the floor and the torso was, and the legs and the torso were up in, like kind of stretching up towards the ceiling, you'd be in Trikonasana. So activate the leg as in Trikonasana. Turn the inner thigh of that right leg in. Now, when in this pose, you can feel that the leg that you leave on the floor, the left leg, it wants to kind of roll outwards. And to a degree, that's what we do in dog down so that you in trikonasana so that you can press the outer heel down onto the floor. But you also need to turn that leg inwards as well. So turn the front of the thigh of the left leg in. So it becomes really firm, lengthen from the hips into the heels. Maintain that 
abdominal breath. Okay, and then bring the leg back to the center and then just release the leg down onto the floor. So just observe the differences, the difference in the leg. Just breathing evenly and deeply. So the two legs will feel completely different. So just observe that. Just relax in for a moment. And then just reinstate your Tadasana. So extend into the legs. And then bend the left leg this time and then hook the belt into the left leg. Standing into the right leg, really activating that right leg, working to straighten the left leg as much as you possibly can, pushing the front of the knee through to the back of the knee, turning the front of the thigh inward. So it's slightly different to trichinaster leg, isn't it? Trichinaster leg, you turn the thigh outwards, but turn the front of the thigh inwards so that you can bring the hips level breathing into the abdomen take hold of both ends of the belt in the left hand and then bring that left leg over to Supta Badanga Tasana 2 so the leg doesn't come directly onto the floor quite yet so bend the elbow out in line with your shoulder and then bring that leg out to the side, extend deeply into that right leg. That right leg should feel um, kind of energized and capable of being engaged in the pose, turning the thigh inwards, lifting and opening the chest. Just breathing evenly and deeply listening to the sound of the breath. Extending from the hips into the heels on both legs. And then just release with the right leg a little so that you can bring the left leg all the way down onto the floor. So the little toe side of the foot, or at least the little toe is down on the floor. And then once it's there, so give yourself as much rope as you need, extend deeply into that right leg. It should feel energized after the last pose. And then stretch out the right arm in line with your shoulder and then turn your head towards the right arm. Turn the abdomen from the left to the right. And then orientate yourself so you can recognize Tadasana. Breathing evenly, deeply connect how you extend into the legs, helping you to extend into the spine. Okay, and then release the leg up towards the ceiling and then just rest the legs down onto the floor. Just breathing evenly, just resting into the floor. Just feel the lightness in the legs. And then pull your knees in towards your chest, get hold of the shins, and then bring the feet back into Baddha Supta Baddha So the feet are together, the knees are apart, lengthen, Press the feet consciously together, lengthen it into the legs, into the torso. Just breathe evenly in through the nose and out through the nose. Drawing the abdomen towards the spine.
and then gently draw your knees in towards your chest pull your knees in towards your chest just have a little rock from top to bottom from side to side just a gentle massage and then gently roll over onto your right side and then stretch out your top leg and then come back into a seated position coming into cross legs just hold onto your knees and lift and open the chest driving the spine upwards just observe the energy in the hips observe the energy in the chest in the arms and then draw your chin forward draw your chin down to meet the chest to make contact with the chest lift the chest up to meet the chin incorporate mula bandha by raising the anal sphincter up towards the diaphragm and then continue to breathe into the abdomen so the samanic breath for me really helps me to connect to my energy just breathe in through the nose out through the nose but draw in the breath into the abdomen Feeling the energy of the breath. And then release Mugla Banda, release Jalandra Banda, and then raise your head. Just breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. And then we're going to do a little bit of alternate nostril breathing, just to bring the energy into the head, just to clear out the sinuses. So if you remember, um, alternate nostril breathing works by covering one nostril so we'll start with the right nostril and then you um, you exhale and inhale through the same nostril and then so you exhale inhale cover the nostril and then exhale inhale and then cover the nostril so you always exhale through the same through the nostril and then inhale through the nostril you can do it the other way around as well that's how we're going to do it today. So just observe your breath to start off with. So often you will inhale through the nostril first, swap and then exhale, but same kind of thing. Just breathe evenly, deeply. So just breathing in through the nose, out through the nose, you can still make it somanic into the abdomen. Exhale and then cover the right nostril and then inhale through the left nostril. 
Cover the left nostril and then exhale through the right. And then inhale through the right. And then swap. You can make the breath forceful. I end on an exhalation and then release and then just breathe normally in through the nose and out through the nose lift up into the chest drive the chest upwards and then we're just going to come forwards into a gentle forward bend if you've got back problems you might just want to stay here or go into Supta Baddha Konasana but from here we're going to lift up into the chest and then create a couple of fists for the hands and then rest your forehead down on those fists now if you can't reach the floor then just build up the floor using blocks so you can use uh, you can pile up a couple of blocks one on top of the other and just come forwards very gently just however you need to bring that forward extension so which, whatever you need to assist the forward extension. Just breathe into the pose, breathe into the abdomen. Observe the energy flowing through the legs, through the torso, through the arms, through the neck, into the head. So lots of slow, long held poses this morning. Just to bring your attention into the physical body. And then lift your head, come up into just cross legs, just observe the energy that comes to the body after coming out of a forward bend, that quietness of the brain. And then just whichever way you're crossing your legs, whether it's in Swastikasana or half Padmasana, cross the legs the other way round, the unnatural way. And then one more time, just come forward, stretching the chest forwards, feeling the extension in the backs of the thighs. Swap the way that you pile up your fists so that you can rest your head on 
your fist. Press the head into the fist, press the fist into the head. And then come back to the centre, just hold onto your knees, lift. And open the chest, driving the spine upwards. And then just swap the crossing of the legs, just go back to the typical crossing of the legs, lift and open the chest, drive the, ch the spine upwards. Take a deep inhalation and then turn to the right side, drawing the abdomen across, keeping the breath in the abdomen. Come back to the centre, hold onto your knees, lift and open the chest, drive your spine upwards, take a good, strong, deep inhalation in through the nose and then turn to the left, drawing the abdomen across, the ribs across, the shoulders across. And then gently come back to the center. Just come down onto your back and then get your bolster. If you've got one, if you haven't, you can use some cushions. Just come down onto the floor and just, you might need a blanket for underneath your head. So we're just gonna do Just come down onto the floor, onto the onto the bolster, and with a blanket underneath your head, just allow the bolster to really open up the chest. Let the feet just fall apart, just let the legs feet soft. So this is the restorative heart pose, just really broadening the abdomen, the rib cage, the collarbone, just keeping real openness. If your head feels like it rolls back a little, just fold your blanket over a little more so you've got good support for your head. Just 
Breathe into the abdomen. So this floor sequence is all about bringing energy into the abdominal region. Allow the energy to radiate out into the legs, into the upper torso, into the arms. If you're wearing glasses, you can take them off just to let the face relax. Releasing into the floor. Just bend your knees. Just bring yourself up into a seated position. Just slide the bolster away and put the bolster so that it's going to be underneath your knees. Have the blanket for, for your head and then just rest yourself along the floor just for a couple of minutes. Just resting yourself down into Shavasana. The bolster underneath your knees helps to soften the abdomen and the lumbar area. Just breathe into the abdomen. Allow yourself to release into the floor. Just allowing the physical body to release and observing the lightness of energy that rises to the top of the skin, distributing that energy evenly with the breath.
very gently wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers, just bring yourself back into this pose of Shavasana. And then bend your knees, bring your feet onto the bolster, just press your lower spine into the floor, the sacrum, the tailbone. And then draw your knees in towards your chest, just have a little rock from top, side to side, from top to bottom, just a gentle massage on the spine. And then just gently roll over onto your right side. And then straighten out the top leg, come back up into a seated position. Just a final cross legs with your hands in the masti. Just a final spinal lift. Draw in your breath in through the nose, down into the abdomen. Conscious of the energy that you have released through your gentle floor practice this morning, that good, positive, healthy flow of clean energy that the extensions, the forward bends, the twists, the inversions bring to the body and the mind. And then draw your chin down to meet your chest. Spend a moment to seek to acknowledge the positive energy you created inside and then send some of that positive energy out into the world. And then as you release the backs of your hands down toward your knees, palms facing upwards, raise your head, allow your eyes to softly open and the focus to softly come back. Thank you very much. So hopefully you feel like you've really opened up the hips particularly. There's a lot of action and movement in the hips and we've got lots of good energy to put into the rest of your day. So thank you very much for joining us.